So he had done his podium session, 15 minutes almost. And then, uh, as is common, he did 10 minutes with the, with the beat people, with the Nashville people. And so we walked over, you guys know the setup here, over to uh, an area on the side. And we were going to do it standing up against uh, you know, a, 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 a ribbon that cordoned off a certain area. And he wanted to be more casual. He said, let's go up into these bleachers that are over near the bench press area. And then um, when he was asked this question, um, he, uh, by Chris Harris, I believe, uh, one of the newscasters in, in Nashville, he did say a few words be- uh, before I got my phone rolling. And that's when he stopped for this pause that people will watch and hear now. So we were surrounding him like I was in the bleacher. He, he was above me. I was in the bleacher row uh, below him. And uh, other cameras and recorders were around him on all sides. So here, here is Robinson where he is asked what he could do better, and he's, his response comes week after, weeks after that loss to Cincinnati. Here's Titans GM John Robinson. trust that ownership has put in me, our fans, and I mean that stadium was rocking now. And you can only imagine what it would have been like the next week. So, pretty long list of stuff that I got to be better at. There's Robinson there. Chad, you and I were watching that. And we were, wow. I mean, but because of when you consider, you know, he's, he knows he's going to be asked about the way the season ended and uh, how successful they've been but have not been able to bust down the door of reaching or winning a Super Bowl. And that that stuck with him. I mean, that this yeah. season, you can tell, is still, you know, riding John Robinson. Look, I was surprised when I saw it. It was a surprising moment from John Robinson. It's going to endear him to fans even more uh, because of that emotion and because how clear it's very personal for him with that loss in the playoffs and what could have been in a home AFC championship game. Uh, Paul, interested to get your uh, take on it. You, you were there. Uh, how shocking of a moment was it being with you know the local media uh, when this happens? Because watching the video, I was, I was surprised to see it. Well, I, I'm not in any way suggesting it's not real. Uh, it's six, week, six weeks removed from the loss, a little over six weeks. He's gotten an extension in that time he tends to get emotional um almost any time ownership comes up so it's an amy adam strunk related thing and we know this is a big big deal for a guy who's from the state uh union city and, and not too too far from nashville so if he was picking a team to have gotten a, a you know his dream job to be gm with this would have been the team um but I, I only want to be slightly cynical. Is there a way I can be slightly cynical instead of sure, uh, entirely absolutely. cynical? I'm not, I'm not being entirely cynical by any means. John Robinson knows that this plays well with, with the fan base. I think he knows that it plays well. Like nationally, this is getting picked up by a lot of people. This tweet and the other people who tweeted it, it's gotten picked up. I got NFL Network asked for permission to, to, to use it. Um, And a lot of people are saying, you want to see a guy who loves ball or, you know, here's an example of how much this means to people. And it is an example uh, of of those things, unquestionably. Um, But I'm I'm just a a little cynical about it. Mike Vrabel was asked a similar question told uh, about Robinson's reaction, and he said, you know, uh, still stings. I hurt most, you know, having won some as a player myself and knowing what it feels like. I hurt most for the guys, 
because they didn't get to experience it, and I know what they're they're missing out on. So a, a different kind of reaction from Vrabel. You know, I have no problem with Robinson's reaction. It was a little surprising that um, you guys know if you're in a press conference setting with say there were probably a dozen of us there. That silence, I don't know, was it six seconds, eight seconds? It feels like Longer. 40 seconds. It was 20 seconds. Yeah. It, was, it was a little over Was 20 it 20 seconds? seconds? Okay, yeah. well, when it's 20 seconds, it feels like 40 seconds or 60 seconds. <laughs> and no, nobody's going to interrupt it, right? So you just let it breathe. It is a very um, – it, it is a very impactful silence, very impactful silence. It, it, Paul, you're dead on. I mean, this plays best to fans, to Titans fans, not not just fans right. of football, but dead Titans fans specifically. The yes, then we're seeing a lot of that uh, in the response, and I get it, and I understand. You know, you want you want the people in charge of winning and losing for your favorite team to care like you care as a fan. You don't ever want to feel like. They're not taking it home with them if you're taking it home with you. And this was a very impactful loss to the Titans fan base, and it's carried on since that loss. So they love seeing John Robinson uh, carry that with him even now. I guess my surprise is just it was an odd setting with a group of local reporters that he sees a lot in Indianapolis, you know, a month removed from the loss with – no real uh, personal implications, players getting injured in the game and out for a long time, or you know things that have happened since then to cause the emotion. So I guess the fact that it's still so raw for him uh, a month later is what was a little bit jarring for me. And I have no problem with it at yeah. all in the emotion, and I, I get why fans love it. Uh, but that was what was jarring to see for me, is that here we are at the Combine in Indy, and you're in a local media gang up, and you, you get emotional over talking about what you would change.